on the boredom induced by magnetic fields. Let's talk about that for a second, shall we? Hi, my name's Alex. I've argued enough for a lifetime. Put your headphones on, sit back, relax and enjoy your commute or whatever else you're really doing right now. Good night to those of you who use my content to fall asleep. <laughs> In addition, please share and like or give a thumbs up or do whatever one does on the platform you use to consume content like this. Doing so will help me a lot. Thank you. Yes, I'm supposed to be kind. I'm not perfect. When talking about magnetic fields being boring, well, let's put it this way. English country gentlemen are known for their outbursts of self-righteous indignation. I'll try to be gentle in the same way, but I'll probably fail. Cause, you know, everybody remembers them from school, surely. Those little pieces of iron on a surface that align in weird shapes when you put a magnet on them. We all remember that as boring. Why do I have to learn about this boring? I mean, there's no interest in magnetic fields, right? Apart from the demagnetization of credit cards, maybe. And why would there be? In everyday life, that and fridge magnets. What more is there to care about? Even if we try to drum up a little sympathy for physics, and we most certainly can, we may fail. Take, for example, the Earth's magnetic field. You know, forget the fridge, this is the whole friggin' planet. Well, the Earth's magnetic field is rather weak, to be honest. It's strong enough, however, to deflect most of the solar wind particles thrown at us by the sun. Whatever enters the Earth's atmosphere creates a wonderful show on the night sky, Aurora Borealis. Without the deflection of the solar wind, Earth would look like Mars. We'd all be dead. You didn't see that one coming, right? No, but those magnetic fields are still rather abstract, passive constructs, you may say. The active part in all of this is played by the particles, by electrons and protons. If they'd hit us, we'd be dead. So even though the Earth's magnetic field is in fact life-savingly important to us, it doesn't really feel interesting. What about the Sun? On it, the biggest explosions in the solar system take place, so-called solar storms which are connected to X-ray events called solar flares. Solar storms happen when the Sun's magnetic field turns in on itself and becomes compressed to the point of snapping. Yes, but here the driving force is differential rotation, you say. It is the fact that the solar gas, or plasma, rotates faster at the equator than it does at the poles, which leads to all sorts of shenanigans. So it is the weird rotation of the Sun that is interesting, not the dull magnetic field. All right, I hear you. I must admit that you are a rather difficult case, as I believe both Aurora, solar flares, as well as your and my sheer existence to be impressive. But still, I think you are looking for a more active, creative, or for that matter, destructive magnetic field. And I have something for you, if you don't mind. Neutron stars. Neutron stars are the densest things this side of a black hole event horizon. Their size is comparable to that of a small city, around 10 to 20 kilometers in diameter, while having a larger mass than the Sun. They consist almost entirely of neutrons and are protected from further collapse by quantum physical effects, balancing out the immense force of gravity. This is where things get interesting. First now, I wrote they consist almost entirely of neutrons. That is wrong. 20% of the neutron star consists of electrically charged protons and electrons. So the moment our star rotates, there will be a magnetic field. Actually, it's not quite as simple as that either. The magnetic fields of neutron stars are composed of frozen-in remnants of supernova magnetic fields and dynamo-driven rotational magnetic fields of the kind that I have just described. In fact, a neutron star's magnetic field can be several trillion times stronger than the Earth's, or the Sun's magnetic field for that matter. Under <clears throat> normal circumstances, that magnetic field is rather predictable. In pulsars, it radiates energy from the star in the form of X-rays, and does so constantly for a significant amount of time. 
when the magnetic field of a neutron star reaches several quadrillion times the strength of the Earth's or the Sun's magnetic field, we call the object in question a magnetar. Strangely enough, magnetars rotate more slowly than ordinary neutron stars. Their magnetic fields are dominated by the supernova leftover component and stay the way they are due to superconduction inside the star, probably. It's all a bit fuzzy and not well understood. Quite frankly, magnetars and their magnetic fields are the most boring thing you will encounter in the whole universe. And I'm not facetious at all now. Your attitude has definitely not made me facetious at this point. Let me give you an example in order to summarize. SGR 1806-20, as it is called, is the closest magnetar we know of. It lies in the constellation of Sagittarius on the other side of the Milky Way, around 50,000 light years from the solar system. Its diameter is around 20 kilometers. Its rotation speed is once every 7.5 seconds. The magnetar's surface, which is only 10 kilometers from the center, turns at a whopping 30,000 kilometers an hour, which, all things considered, is a slow rotational speed. Together with the frozen-in component, the magnetic field of SGR 1806-20 then becomes 1-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-